All right, so for a good couple of months, we've had a lot of arcs, whether it was the Borg arc or the Outlaw arc, or even the Discovery one. These have all brought us content, which we could only imagine two years ago when the game started. Now, we have the next arc and it is truly something. Is it the best arc yet? I'll let you be the judge of that. Okay, here's a summary of everything that's gonna be included in this arc battle pass and I'll be going over them in detail throughout this video. First of all, we have the new TOS officers and new mining officers. Second, we have new research to speed up your game. Third, we have a bunch of regular and battle pass events, which I'll be going over later on. Fourth, we have a whole bunch of new battle pass rewards. Fifth, we have a brand new ISS jellyfish service for territory capture. Want to get this ship for free? You'll want to check this out later on. Sixth, we have one change to a mission, specifically a long cane spider. Okay, so those are the six main points. Let's get right down to the nitty gritty of the new arc slash battle pass. So the first new item on this agenda is the new TOS officers. And I'm super excited about this. The fact that they're bringing Prime Kirk, Prime Spock and Prime Ahura into the fray is just fantastic. We've not been waiting over two years for this. Uh, you know, not everyone is a fan of the Kelvin Universe officers, and I can see why. It's not just, you know, the same Kirk and Spock that we're used to. Um, that's okay though, though, because the new Kirk and Spock and Hera are all going to be pretty good. So let's go into more detail. So here we have Prime Epic Kirk, and his first ability is 3D Strategist. So when fighting players at the start of the round, if you have morale, you can increase the energy damage by X percentage of defense. This is cl cl uh, cumulative, by the way. So, you know, the base value is 50%, but it can go up to another 50%. Uh, this is absolutely crazy. So his next ability is, it's all we have to go on. Uh, as long as your HHP is above 30% of the starting value at the start of each round, there is an X percentage chance of gaining morale for that round. So if you manage to nab Prime Epic Kirk, um, you know, I think it would be great on the Enterprise or any, any other energy weapon ship which you may have. Uh, okay, so let's move on to Prime Epic Spark. Now, the developers have told me they fought long and hard to make him an epic officer. He was initially going to be a blue officer, a rare officer, but the developers, you know, they really wanted to make him extra special. So kudos to them. Okay, so his main ability is uh, Live Long. So when defending at the start of each round, you can heal the ship HP by X percentage of defense. Now, the good thing is that if you're defending against a station attack, uh, this ability affects all ships in the station. I can't stress enough how important it is to have this officer, especially for defense. Okay, so his next ability is Prosper. So when fighting players at the start of each round, you have morale, uh, you can decrease the opponent's critical hit damage bonus by X percentage for that round. So we have some pretty good defense here and some pretty good PvP abilities. Okay, so moving on, we next we have Prime Rare Ahura. So her main ability is Sorry Neither, which works for PvP. So at the start of each round, if you have morale, decrease the opponent's critical hit chance by X, percent X percentage for that round. So really another solid ability here. Her second ability, Modulation Frequency Found, uh, decreases the opponent's shield mitigation uh, each turn. So here we have a solid TOS crew, but this isn't everything. The developers are introducing even more officers to the game. We have, drum roll please, two new mining officers. <laughs> so we have Raphael Dupont and uh, Elia uh, McKinnon. So you're probably wondering who the hell are these characters? You Have you heard of them before? Well, I've been told that they might be from the Star Trek Kelvin comics. Uh, don't quote me on that though, not 100% confirmed. Okay, so first in the new mining officers, we have DuPont. Now this guy is essential to any mining crew, okay? DuPont's captain ability is mid-grade mining. So he increases the mining speed for G3 crystal or in gas. Uh, his second ability is Protected Cargo. He can eventually increase the Protected Cargo limit up to 300%. So this is if you upgrade him uh, to the max. So 
solid mining officer here. So let's move on to McKinnon. Her captain ability is base mining speed. So she can increase the overall mining speed of your ship. Her second ability uh, is ISO mining. As I've explained in previous videos, the developers wanted to uh, make territory capture a really big deal in this arc. Um, McKinnon's ISO mining increases the ISO mining speed greatly. And you know, having it both and even Arium um, on board your ship would be very powerful for ISO mining. Um, so I'll get into why it's more important than ever to mine ISO later on in the video, but let's move now on to research, which we'll be seeing in this arc. First, we have Nanoprobe Hunter. So this increases the Nanoprobe rewards for the Vidar only. This one has 10 research levels. Next, we have Prime Active Nanoprobe Refining. So this unlocks a better Nanoprobe Refinery. This is also Prime, by the way, G4E. So this is required. So remember, this is a Prime, um, not unlockable straight away. Next, we have Prime Borg Rewards. So this will unlock a better Borg Refinery. Now, as it is a Prime, it does require G4E to unlock. However, if you buy and complete the Elite, track of the battle pass it will be granted to you on the final milestone so you know I, I can't stress this enough for say 20 bucks you can unlock this prime for just 20 bucks uh, that's some crazy value right there okay next we have Franklin impulse speed so this will increase the impulse speed of the Franklin a lot so there's about five research levels to this so be sure to use this to your advantage Next, we have Frequency Modulator Cost Efficiency. So this, as advertised, increases the cost efficiency um, of those frequency modulators. So a lot of levels of research for this. Uh, then we have, drum roll please, Devore Latinum Mining Improvements. <laughs> so if you don't have 10 of 10, uh, it doesn't matter because you, as long as you activate this research, uh, boom, like you have a speedy devore ready for mining latinum. Again, remember, remember there are 10 levels of research for this. So that is something to definitely consider. Uh, then we have prime latinum refining. So this research increases the value of bundles for raw latinum. But remember, it is a prime, to, so it does take um, some special materials. Now, the last research on the table is Devore Security Enhancements. This will increase the protected cargo of your Devore, but it is really worth it in the end, especially for those Latinum Mondays. All right, so there you have it. That's all from the research in this arc. From what the developers have told me, it's really meant to decrease your time grinding in the game. And I have to admit, once you achieve all of this research, it does just that. All right, so let's move on to our next topic now, new regular events. First, we have the Heroic Battle Pass Overflow. Okay, so gone are the days when you would stop competing in events when you completed the Battle Pass. Especially for me, like once I completed the Battle Pass, I would just stop trying to earn those um, Battle Pass points. So once you unlock, you so basically with this event, you can unlock rewards by earning points once you're fully completed the Battle Pass. So this is that extra thing for, for the players who want, to go, who want to go an extra mile. Okay, so next we have Prime Officers, both Solo and Alliance. It's a one three-day event and two two-day events. So collect any Officer Shards plus a bonus crew if you get uh, any of the TOS crew. Uh, next we have Rescue the Crew. This will be a one two-day event and two one-day events. This will involve hybrid PvE slash PvP in anomaly systems. Then we have Tour of Duty or Wrath of Duty, which one you, whatever one you're going to go for, maybe both, which will involve uh, three two-day events. So basically in this event, you'll have to defeat Klingon, Romulan, and Faction Hostiles. Bonus points, of course, for using the TOS crew. And then we have Fascinated. So this event, this four one-day event, and two two-day events, um, you'll have to mine dilithium, mycelium, data, or isogen. Again, if you use TOS officers for those bonus points. 
Uh, then we have scrambled communication. So this is an interesting one. So this is a seven day treasure hunt, uh, which will result in sub events appearing after you complete each one. Basically the mission logs will be scrambled and you'll have to figure them out. Like this is a pretty cool one. I think they had something similar in the Borg arc. I'm not too sure about that, uh, but this is definitely a first. Um, so again, I love these treasure hunts. It's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, then the last new event we have is Prime Research. Basically, you'll have to complete Prime Researches in the first seven days. Okay, so let's move now on to the new Battle Pass events. First, we have Hostile Hunt plus Armada. Now, this has been slightly rebalanced since the last time to reduce grinding and targeting of regular hostiles. They've also added the option to defeat uh, Fed, Klingons, and Romulan Armadas. Plus, they've removed ship tiering materials uh, spent for metrics. Now, if you're a lower player, you may not be able to start these armadas, but uh, you can participate them, participate in the armadas for points. So basically, you need someone in your alliance um, who can start these armadas. So remember that. So if you're a low level player, you need someone to start these armadas uh, for you. Okay, second, we have Clear the Coast. So this is the same as the Outlaws Arc Part 2. So this is for level 20, 27 plus. Uh, something to note, Separatist Hunt and Regular Hostile Hunt will be leaving the rotation uh, to make up for these. Okay, so let's move now on to the Battle Pass rewards. Everyone's been asking about this. Uh, so for the Battle Pass rewards, we have a huge amount of stuff. Uh, so it'll go on for basically 20 days uh, but both of the basic and elite battle pass rewards are pretty incredible. So included will be resources as well as new avatars, frames, officer, shot, officer shots, and badges. So nothing new there. Now, if you want to unlock Ahura or McKinnon, these two will potentially be unlockable through engagement in the battle pass. No 100% fingers crossed on this. Um, Ahura will be in the elite battle pass, but you'll have to complete four times um, out of four, the third milestone of Rescue the Crew, and of course, complete Scrambled Communication. So I'm just gonna repeat that, you have to complete four times out of four on the third milestone and Rescue the Crew, plus um, complete Scrambled Communication. So keep that in mind. So to get McKinnon, the, the mining officer, you'll have to complete three times out of four, the first milestone of Rescue the Crew. Okay. So let's move now on to what you've been really waiting for in this video. What is the ISS Jellyfish Territory Capture Service? Basically, you'll be able to eventually unlock the ISS Jellyfish for free through Territory Capture. If your alliance has one of the following systems in Territory Capture space, Makala, Korva, or Brelin, you'll be able to activate the ISS Jellyfish Service. It's pretty harsh because it essentially means only three alliances on your server will have access to the service. So keep in mind, once this service is activated, it will trigger two things. First, an offer in the store, $99 for 15 blueprints. So that's only if you have the service activated. And second, a blueprint refinery bundle, which requires G3 isogen. So remember, at the beginning of the video, I was telling you, you need G3 Isogen. This is what you need it for. So the refinery bundles are 6,500 G3 ISO for one ISS Jellyfish Blueprint, 45,000 G3 ISO for five blueprints, and 500,000 G3 ISO for 15 blueprints. So remember, this refinery bundle is weekly. So there is a weekly cooldown involved. So it might be best to refine, I don't know, five blueprints at a time, especially if you're not mining isogen all the time. So what does this really mean? Well, if you are in an alliance, which has one of these zones with an activated service and you are mining the G3 isogen, if you can refine 500,000 G3 isogen every week, then it will take you approximately two months to get all of the blueprints needed to build your ISS jellyfish. So apart from that, uh, that is pretty much it. So apart from the change to the Along Came a Spider mission, 
new research, new officers, new events, and of course the new and improved ISS Jellyfish. That's about it. Thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel, and I hope you're staying safe out there during the pandemic. Uh, by the way, I've included a list of events during the arc which you may like. This is all subject to change, of course, but it does give you a taste of what is to come. Stay safe out there, guys.